Now in part D, all we've got to do now is just work out the exact value of this integral here. Now, whenever I have a constant in an integral, I always find it simplifies the integral by taking that constant out the front. You don't have to do that, you'll still get the same answer assuming you don't trip up, but it does tend to make the working out a lot easier. Okay, so I've taken my constant out the front and now I've got this integral here. And something like this where you've got a product of two terms that cannot be expanded is a typical kind of candidate for integrating by parts. So integrating by parts, if you're not familiar with that then here is the integrating by parts formula. But in this particular question, we're not integrating with respect to x here, we're integrating with respect to t. So you're going to need to change this formula. These dx's need to be changed to dt. So we'll just do that for you now, okay, to help guide us through. So that would be dt, and that would be a dt there. Alright? So how's this formula going to work? Well, we've got to nominate the two parts, okay? And the parts that we're going to have as u will be the t here, so I'll just put that in as u, and e to the t, that part is going to be the dv by dt. Normally in an exam I wouldn't write this here, I might do it in the margin, but I'm just going to put it like this for the moment. Right then, so we just need to crack on with the formula. Two thirds there, let's put a square bracket up and start to integrate this. So according to the formula, it's u times v. That is u being the t, multiplied by v, which is the integral of e to the t with respect to t. So that would be e to the t. If you integrate e to the t with respect to t, you get e to the t. Then it is minus the integral of v. Now remember v is this part here, so that's e to the t. And that is multiplied by du by dt, so we need to differentiate the u part here, differentiate t with respect to t, and you get 1. Pop that in there and we have dt on the end. Don't forget to square, close the square brackets and put the limits in going from 1 to 4. All we need to do now is just work out this last integral. So we've got the first part here which is t e to the t. doesn't need the brackets anymore. e to the t times 1 is e to the t and so we have the integral of e to the t which is just simply still e to the t. Square the brackets off and put the limits back in from 1 to 4. Next we need to just substitute the 4 through, so we have the 2 thirds here. Put 4 in for t and we have 4 e to the 4, 4 e to the 4, minus e to the 4. Let's put that in brackets. And then we now put the 1 through, we subtract what we'd get when we put the 1 through. So we'd have 1 times e to the 1, so that's e to the 1. And then minus e to the 1 again. Now, that means that this bracket is 0. So we have 2 thirds then. It looks like this integral, this formula here is in the way, so we'll just remove that. So it looks like we have just simply 2 thirds then times 4e to the 4, take away e to the 4, so that's 3e to the 4. Pop that in there. And we're asked to give the final result to four significant figures. So if you get on the calculator and work this out, you'll notice the threes, by the way, cancel. So this is really just 2e to the 4. That's the exact result, but... 
if we're asked to give it to four significant figures, on a calculator you find you get 109.196 and so on, which when rounded to four significant figures is 109.2. Don't forget to put 4SF on the end. And that brings us then to the end of part D.